Hello, I'm Jacob Heimovitz, and I gotta tell you, I am 24 and a half. I'm turning 25 by the end of the year, which is on September 24th, and it has been, it has been, it has been six years since I became an adult. I became an adult on September 24th, 2015 at age 18. I've been an adult for six and a half years and I'll be, I'll be 25 by September 24th, which is the end of the year. And I gotta tell you something. We'll talk about one of my favorite movies of all time since I was 18 as an adult and why I never got to be a film franchise. It's Independence Day. Man. I love Independence Day. It's one of my all-time favorite movies of all time since I was an adult at, at age 18. And I gotta tell you something. When I was 6 and 10, not only I have not heard of Independence Day, but my parents would not let me see Independence Day with Will Smith because it's too violent and scary and tense about aliens invading Earth, destroying major cities around the world, and a um, group of survivors around the world must band together, unite, and stop the alien invaders from destroying the entire planet on 4th of July in order to fight back and save the world and humanity. And I gotta tell you something. I'm a huge... Well... I gotta tell you something. Independence Day 1 was a huge blockbuster smash hit success at the Worldwide Box Office grossing over $800 million around the world, which is the number one worldwide highest grossing movie of, two, of 1996, and won an Oscar Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. And Independence Day also got good reviews from critics and audiences. They got a very, it's one of Roland Emmerich's Highest rated films alongside with The Patriot, which I do want to see. I haven't seen it yet, but we'll get to that later. And I'll make another video about it once I've seen that movie. And I got to tell you, it's been six years since I, I saw Independence Day double feature. Well, before that, I want, when Independence Day Resurgence was coming out, which is a sequel to Independence Day, I was anticipated to see it. I, I was anticipated to see that movie. I wanted to see that in theaters. I hope it will be as successful or good as the first film. But in early June, when they announced the Independence Day double feature, and they were showing, they were showing a re-release of the 20th anniversary of Independence Day, starring Will Smith and directed by Roland Emmerich and produced by Dean Devlin. Independence Day, the original film from 1996, was back in theaters for its 20th anniversary around the United States, including big theater chains around the United States, that Independence Day, the first film, is being returned to theaters for its 20th anniversary, as that will play at 5 o'clock, and then after that, it will play Independence Day Resurgence in 3D. And I gotta tell you something, I, when I was 18, and Rick, my adult neighbor, who is, was 49 at the time, 2016, who is now 55, he he's three decades older than me. Rick is my neighbor since since I was a little kid. I was like I was like um I I remember I I went swimming at the house in Oct in October two thousand two when I was five at Rick and Irene's house and Rick is is three decades older than me. He is he was forty nine at the time and I was eighteen at the time. He took me all the way to a nearby AMC theater in Century City. The AMC Century City 15, Rick, on June, it was on June 23rd, 2016, when I was 18, Rick drove me 20 minutes from my, Rick and I drove all, drove 20 minutes from my house to the Century City Mall at the, and go went to the AMC Theaters, Century City 15, which is not as, which is not as far from my house as the ones in Torrance and Redondo Beach, which is further. The AMC Century City 15 is closer, much closer, and 20 minutes from my house then the AMC were down to beach and Torrance, which they all three have Dolby Cinemas. And Rick drove me from my house to the AMC Century City 15, which is 20 minutes. And we saw Independence Day double feature. And before that, prior to that date, mom got the tickets for the Independence Day double feature. And it was at Theater 11. 
And when Independence Day was screened at Theater 11 at the AMC Century City 15 with a digitally remastered and restored picture in digital projection, crystal clear digital projection, it's not a 4K laser projector, and 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 mixed in with digital surround sound, which is very loud, Independence Day showed up and I was cheering for joy. Independence Day was never shown with previews during the Independence Day double feature and it was so awesome. I remember the White House explosion that I got to see in the theater. It was so enjoyable. I had a much wonderful time. I was so thrilled. I had a much great time. And I was cheering for joy when humans must defeat the aliens from taking over the whole world. I got this movie gave me goosebumps. The effects were so great. It was filled with practical, miniature CGI and digital compositing effects for it. The film was mixed with a comedy. The film has the much of the effects in Independence Day were a combination mix of practical, miniature CGI and digital compositing for its destruction, invasion, and and battle scenes. Man, the plot is so great. The cast is so great. The musical score is great, and Will Smith as the lead role was so awesome in that movie. And Independence Day, and Will Smith was famous before Independence Day. Before Will Smith became an actor, he was a hip hop rapper, a musical artist, hip hop rapper. He was in a hip hop duo, hip hop rap duo, called DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. The Fresh Prince is Will Smith, and. Jazzy Jeff is the disc jockey, and they and they made half a dozen big hit hip hop singles around the world, including the one I really love. Parents just don't understand. And after that, Will Smith started his very own. And in 1990, Will Smith became a famous actor in a TV show called The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That show made Will Smith famous as an actor, but people say. Independence Day made Will Smith a much famous, popular movie actor. But he was famous before Independence Day. He was already famous before he was an actor. In the late 80s, Will Smith was already famous before he became an actor. The song I really love, Parents Just to Understand, was Will Smith's first song that made him very famous, popular, and big. That was his first major song that made Will Smith famous as a hip-hop hip -hop rapper. And two years later... After making, well, The Fresh Prince and, G D and DJ Jazzy Jeff, which I really love, has made lots of, he's made, made half a dozen hit singles around the world. And after that, in 1990, Will Smith rose to modest international fame. For the show, I do want to see that's very hilarious, but my twin sister watched it when she was 12 on TV as a rerun called The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air aired for six seasons, for six years probably, I don't remember how many seasons it was on TV for, but that show was longer running and it was very popular when it came out. And that show made Will Smith very famous and popular. And he was in a lot of movies. Will Smith was in a lot of blockbuster movies like Bad Boys, released in 1995 before Independence Day, which I really love. Bad Boys when I was 17 and before, before I became an adult. And Independence Day made Will Smith much, much bigger. And Will Smith Independence Day was so awesome. You know, when I was 6 and 10, I loved Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, the movie and the show. And Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius and Independence Day both have lots of outer space stuff with aliens, outer space. And I used to love Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius when I was 7 through 10. And I used to love the TV show too. Jimmy Neutron was one of my all-time favorite movies and shows. That was my my parents would only let me see that not 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 Independence Day when I was a little kid. And Jimmy Neutron Boy James is aimed at younger kids, younger than eleven, as well as the movie and the show. And Independence Day is, is those films I loved when I was an adult. And I gotta tell you, the story for Independence Day is great. The effects were great. The sound effects were great. The musical score is great. The production team was so great. They were so talented at making this movie. I mean, I love Independence Day. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. The plot is so awesome. The dialogue is so great. And it was, although it's an original story, Independence Day was loosely inspired by and similar, very similar to War of the Worlds with a very similar, highly similar premise and plot about aliens threatening to take over the world with, with, 
with alien ships and aliens took over the whole world and humanity must find a way to stop the aliens and I've read War of the Worlds, the classic starts version that's aimed at younger middle school readers, grades 6 to 7, and it's one of my favorite novels of all time. War of the Worlds is one of my favorite novels of all time. I guess I saw War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise when I was 19. I wasn't, I probably wasn't allowed to watch it when I was a little kid when it came out because it was too scary, violent, intense, and disturbing, but I finally got to watch it as age 19. I know War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise is one of the scariest disaster movies ever made and a Steven Spielberg scariest movie he's ever made. And it is one of the scariest disaster movies and the scariest Steven Spielberg movie he made, War of the Worlds. I loved it. I, when I was a kid, if I watched it, I would get scared easily, get terrified. But as an adult at age 19, I loved it. I have that on 4K Blu-ray. There is an original 1953 timeless classic, famous, popular, legendary, iconic movie, fantasy science fiction film, War of the Worlds released five decades before War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise, and it was also very great. I do want to see it. It's nearly 90 minutes long. It has the same premise as War of the Worlds, the book, and Independence Day with Will Smith, and I'm a huge War of the Worlds fan. I'm a huge diehard fan. I love fantasy science fiction. I'm a huge, huge sci-fi fan. I love science fiction. But Independence Day is so great, so unforgettable, it was so memorable, I love the battle scenes. I think my favorite part of Independence Day has to be the action scenes, including the battle scenes, the destruction scenes. It was so great. But after seeing Independence Day in theaters, we had a lot of fun. Well, before that, when, when there were commercials and the movie started, there were no previews. Independence Day showed. I was so on the edge of my seat. We had a fun time at the theater and Independence Day was so great. I enjoyed it a lot. I handled the destruction scenes. Even when I watched Independence Day, when I was 6 and 10, I would get very Even when I watched Independence Day with Will Smith when I was 6 and 10, it would scare me a lot much easily. But when I was 18, it doesn't anymore. I didn't watch Independence Day when I was 6 and 10. I wasn't allowed to watch it, but I was only allowed to watch Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, the movie and the TV show, which is aimed at 6 and 10 year olds. And I really loved it. Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius is one of my favorite movies and TV shows when I was 6 and 10, and even 11 through 12. And Independence Day is so awesome. But. When I saw Independence Day 2 Resurgence in 3D, not only it bombed at the box office, it didn't gross as much as the first Independence Day, but it was poorly, it got very terrible reviews from critics, audiences, and fans of the first film. It was so bad. Independence Day 2 was so terrible. The reason, not one of the things it was so bad is that Will Smith was not in Independence Day Resurgence. Eh, wrong. Independence Day in was not an Independence Day resurgence. Independence Day was not an in was not an Independence Day resurgence. I thought the action scenes in Independence Day Two were so bad, even though it's not made of shaky cam. It was so bad, and the action was so bad. There's too much bad CGI in it. The plot is so bad. It was like a sequel to the mega blockbuster, huge smash hit movie that grossed billions of dollars, Titanic. No. Independence Day never, ever got to be a film franchise. Never. Independence Day franchise was bad, but the first Independence Day with Will Smith was so great, so successful, and I gotta tell you, Independence Day 2 I saw in theaters in 3D, and I hated it. It was one of the worst sequels ever made. It never got to be as successful, both critically and commercially, as the first film. There was no Will Smith. The CGI, the di the CGI effects, the dialogue, the action scenes, the musical score was so bad. It was so forgettable. It wasn't that good. Independence Day 2 was sucks. It didn't make as much as Jurassic World that probably grossed over a billion dollars worldwide. Independence Day 2 has grossed between 300 and 400 million dollars worldwide at the box office. It was so freaking bad. So fucking bad. But there were some good stars. And I gotta tell you something. In the first Independence Day, I love the young children who are younger than 11. Who was related to Will Smith's character and Bill Pullman's character as the soldier and the president. I love... The two main characters as young kids, that, that who is whose parents is Will Smith's Will Smith's character and Je and Bill Pullman's character. I love those two kids as as very young kids. I don't, but in Independence Day, the first film, 
the two small young little kids who is a boy and a girl they're all both younger than 11 man i love them as young kids they they're one they're one they're two of the they're two of the main characters of the main characters of the film but will smith plays stephen hiller and Bill Pullman plays the president. I love their kids. They're cute. They're adorable. They're small, young little kids who are younger than 11. What I mean by that, they're, they're between ages 2 to 10 year old range. I love them as young kids. I don't, well, but in Independence Day Resurgence, as they're grown up adults, I don't like them as adults. In the second Independence Day, when the, when the two young children, younger than 11, became adults as the main protagonist, I don't like them. And Chris Hemsworth played the adult male young adult character which I don't really like he wasn't related to Jeff Goldblum as David Levinson's character as a son or father as a family no I just like their names are Patricia and I don't remember but I gotta tell you the two small young little kids as the main as one of the main characters in Independence Day are is are both related to and their parents are Will Smith's Stephen Hiller and Bill Pullman as the president. I'm not but also I love them as small young little kids who are younger than 11. I don't like them as adults because once they're adults it looks weird. I don't like the two small young little kids that were related to the president the Stephen Hiller as adults. I like them as small young little kids as the main characters. It, it, it kind of reminds me of when The Simpsons is not aimed at younger kids who are younger who are younger than 11. It has a lot of small young little kids between the ages mostly between the ages of 8 and 10 in the show in the blockbuster hit movie that I really love when I was an, a teenager. But in but The Simpsons has a lot of small young little kids ages 8 to 10 mostly as the main characters, but it's still not aimed at that audience. It's very adult. It's very inappropriate. It's very edgy for young kids. There's lots of sexual content, swearing, bar scenes, smoking drugs and there's some violent scenes like bullying itchy and scratchy episodes with blood and gore and i should i i saw the simpsons and liked it when i was eight and ten including the simpsons movie but it never should happen i should have never watched or liked the simpsons when i was eight and ten well, let's let's get back to independence day roland emmerich i love him on the same level as michael bay they both make very action-packed explosion heavy movies with destruction and Michael Bay, I love nine of his movies, including the five Transformers movies, the two Bad Boys movies, The Rock and Armageddon. They're so action-packed, so full of explosions. I love those movies. I, I don't like every Michael Bay movie, but I love nine of his movies, including the Transformers, Bad Boys franchises, The Rock and Armageddon, which are all huge, huge blockbuster smash hits. But Roland Emmerich, I'm not going to like all of his movies. He's only made a half a dozen disaster movies about the end of the world, including Godzilla, which is a very, very terrible, very terrible, forgettable, unpopular, terrible, hated movie. Despite that it was a box office hit, it wasn't as successful as the studio hoped for, and it was so bad. There's a lot of destruction and chaos in Ka Godzilla, but I don't. I would never see Godzilla directed by Roland Emmerich, even though it looks very interesting. I don't want to see it, but the good news is, Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin, the producers of Independence Day, also co-produced the sequel TV show animated series Godzilla, which got much better reviews, much more greater, better reviews than the terrible Godzilla, but the, with the same producers of Independence, with the same producers of Independence Day. And I want to see the Godzilla TV animated TV show, not the terrible film from 1998. And I got to tell you, the recent Roland Emmerich movie, which is a rip-off to Armageddon and Deep Impact, two big blockbuster smash heads with a similar premise about uh, an object or a moon or asteroid hitting the Earth and a team of astronauts must travel into outer space to stop the a common asteroid or moon from hitting the Earth. I love Deep Impact and Armageddon. I, I saw them as adults. I liked them. I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to watch both when I was a little kid or haven't heard of it. But Moonfall was so bad. It... It was a knockoff of Armageddon and Deep Impact with a similar premise. But it's still original and groundbreaking, but it's still bad. It's like Armageddon and Deep, Deep Impact with the moon. And in July 2020, during the COVID pandemic lockdown, 
that infected and killed lots of people in July 2020. I saw 2012 because I was a huge fan of Roland Emmerich, who made Independence Day. And as 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 40 minutes or more began, there was so so much end of the world chaotic destruction, full of billions of people dying. I thought and 2012 has a, has a huge billion body count. It was so devastating. And I originally thought it was fun to watch 2012 about the world ending with with cities, countries, continents, and oceans and waters getting destroyed about the whole world ending. I thought I was enjoying it, but once I got into, but, but once the movie progressed, my, my mentor and good friend and my parents don't want me to watch it because it's too sad, too tragic, too devastating, full of end of the world scenes, ki- full of billions of people dying. So I stopped between an hour and a half to an hour and four minutes and I got very shocked and worried. And then a year or more later, I watched, well, last year on Saturday night, I watched the day after tomorrow because I thought it would like it and will teach me about Ice Ages past and present. But it's another end of the world movie about lots of death and destruction and once I got to the 30-40 minute mark during the tornadoes that destroys Los Angeles, I turned it off. I saw trailers for both as an adult, but I saw advertisements for 2012 when I was 12. And I got scared of that movie. I didn't want to see it. It made me, make me worried. And the Mayan calendar thinks the world's going to end December 21st, 2012. But once it's the holiday season of 2012, I got very scared. Because of that movie 2012, based on the Mayan calendar... I thought the world was going to end December 21st, 2012. But the world didn't end December 21st, 2012. The mind calendar is so false. And in 2014 or 13, my mind was in another planet. I thought the world was ending. I thought the gravity, the Earth's gravity was getting lower. I thought there was a lot of lawlessness in LA in 2013 of the sp- 14 of 2014 of the spring. I thought I thought you have to be you can't wear clothes anymore. I thought you have to, I thought they were going to take down a tree and show the, to show the bottom of the earth. But that was a scary time, but I got overcome that months later. And I saw the Day After Tomorrow trailer two years ago, and it was about the whole world ending with, cl- with non-stop climate change and global warming that's leading into a new ice age. Once I saw it and I turned it off, I don't want to see both of those movies. I don't like 2012 or The Day After Tomorrow, written, produced, directed, and made by the same people of Independence Day. I don't like those two movies. Not a huge fan. About the whole world ending, whether it's from extreme weather or natural disasters, about billions of people dying, mass destruction, mass chaos, mass lawlessness. It was so bad, so devastating. But... The only Roland Emmerich... I'm, I'm a huge fan of Roland Emmerich, but I'm not going to like all of his movies. I've only seen... I've only seen three Roland Emmerich movies. I've seen White House Down, which wasn't great. It was good. It wasn't great. It was good. I saw Stargate on Netflix. I love Stargate. It was so fun. It, it's got lots of outer space and alien stuff. I want to see the Stargate TV show. Stargate was so great. I loved it. I saw White House Down on the TV last year and it was so good. It wasn't great. It was similar to Olympus's Fault, which I don't really like but you saw it and liked it and laughed at it. But I don't want to see Olympus's Fault anymore. It's too violent, too bloody, too much too much blood, too much violence, too much killings. But White House Down was aimed at a at a teenage audience. Olympus's Fault was aimed at an adult audience. And despite White House Down being a block being a box office flop, it was still the worldwide highest grossing Die Hard in the White House film with a gross of over $200 million around the world. It made the most money around the world than Olympus has fallen that grossed less than $200 million worldwide. And a lot of people like White House Down, directed by Roland Emmerich, or probably the one directed by Antoine Fuqua. They both, they, they both grossed nearly the same amount of money, but... 
White House Town has grossed more than Olympus Has Fallen, the one directed by Roland Emmerich. I thought White House Town was a very fun, entertaining movie that has a lot of good plot, good action scenes, and White House Town was directed by Roland Emmerich and produced by the same producer of Independence Day, Roland Emmerich's sister. There's a lot of destruction, there's lots of explosions, and the scene of the America, United States being under attack, including Washington, D.C., that's Roland Emmerich's kind of style. Roland Emmerich, this, he's only made a half a dozen action movies. I'm not, and I, I said it wrong. Roland Emmerich has made six disaster movies, including the sequel to Independence Day, which is bad, the terrible Godzilla, and the more recent Moonfall. Roland Emmerich has made six disaster movies, and a lot of his films are very action packed, very explosion heavy movies with, with destruction. And I, the only Roland Emmerich movies I do want to see that I have in 4K HDR is The Patriot and Universal Soldier. Universal Soldier, I originally didn't want to see because it's, I originally didn't want to see because it was too violent and bloody intense. But as I watch it again, the trailer, not the movie, it had a positive message of getting along with people c c goodly and ethics, but it doesn't have a lot of positive messages. It has a, a, a sum. But I have it on 4K Blu-ray Universal Soldier, and I have The Patriot on 4K HDR, Dolby Vision, and Dolby Atmos on my TV. And The Patriot is Roland Emmerich's second highest rated movie, but the major con of that movie is Mel Gibson. I don't like Mel Gibson. He's so bad. He's against, he's a Jew hater. He's a Jew hater. And he, and he, he's, he's done very bad stuff. People don't like him, whether they're Jewish or not. I don't like Mel Gibson. And Independence Day was so great, and it never got to be a film franchise. But I've seen Independence Day count a lot of times on my on 4K Blu-ray. I have Independence Day on 4K Blu-ray with HDR picture and DTSX soundtrack. And I originally had a I seen Independence Day lots of times on 4K Blu-ray in DTSX on my Sony Virtual 5.1 channel Dolby Atmos soundbar with speakers and a subwoofer. And I originally had a I I originally and still own an Onkyo 7.1 channel 4K UHD Dolby Atmos audio video receiver with DTS HD Master Audio, not DTSX and not HDR. But I wish my receiver had a firmware update to have DTSX and HDR, but it didn't happen. And I still have my Dolby Atmos receiver from Onkyo. It's a 7.1 channel Dolby Atmos receiver that does a 5.1.2 channel Dolby Atmos configuration. And I originally have the Samsung not Samsung. In 2007 of August, I got the Panasonic 5.1 channel DVD player with surround speakers and a subwoofer and center channel and front speakers. And we watched a lot of movies on there, including Jimmy Neutron My Genius when I was 10 in February 9, 2008. I had lots of fun. I saw Jimmy Neutron My Genius with my, one of my people working with me since he was 18 on in the Saturday morning, February 9, 2008. We had a much great time. We watched Jimmy Neutron Magians for nearly an hour and 20 minutes on my Panasonic 5.1 channel digital surround sound home theater system with a DVD player. And it's, it sounds like being in a movie theater. I've seen um, a Goofy movie, Chicken Little, Incredibles, Inspector Gadget, and, many, and, and, and some more. But I got to tell you, Chicken Little, Inspector Gadget, I used to like when I was looking at those two Disney animated live action movies. I heard they're not great. They're good, but they're both... Blockbuster hits, moderate box office hits. There are kids who like that movie. And I used to watch The Incredibles. When I, I used to watch those when I was 10, the last year of a small young little kid, who is also the last year at elementary school. And we still got the pan, we still have the Panasonic speakers from the DVD player. We just got a Dolby Atmos receiver from Monkyo that has 4K UHD and Bluetooth with music optimizer, which makes Bluetooth and other compressed music audio sound much, much better and fuller. And we the receiver was connected to optical with the TV, and you couldn't get Dolby Surround to work because Dolby Surround upmixing is a new Dolby thing that takes non-Dolby Atmos and 2D traditional surround sound audio content and transfers it and upscales it to much, much closer to Dolby Atmos. And... I gotta tell you, last year, I looked up that the well, in 2018 of October and through July 2019, I got the Sony soundbar with virtual Dolby Atmos, but it doesn't have upward firing speakers. It just do, uses surround processing to emulate Dolby Atmos without upward firing speakers. And I got the surround speakers, 
and it sounds good. It doesn't sound the same as a tr as a real as a traditional Dolby Atmos setup with upward firing speakers, but it sounds good. But it won't sound as good as the upward firing speakers. I watch Independence Day, the first film on 4K Blu-ray, lots of times on my on the Sony virtual 5.1 channel Dolby Atmos sound sound system with not with with no upward firing speakers. But in, earlier last year. I finally realized is that the Sony Virtual Dolby Atmos surround soundbar with the speakers and the subwoofer will only work in rooms that are less than ideal with the vaulted, slanted, angled ceilings or beam ceilings or ceilings that are not flat and that are not, I mean, and and very high ceilings higher than twelve feet. And I didn't like my 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 virtual so my I didn't like my Sony virtual Dolby Atmos surround soundbar system anymore. The last movie I watched on that system was Terminator 2 Judgment Day on 4K Blu-ray. It sounded good. It's not not the same as a traditional Dolby Atmos home theater setup. But don't get me wrong. More than 13 full-on premium high performance high quality high fidelity Dolby Atmos home theater surround soundbar systems that most of them have surround speakers or Two of them from Sony and Sennheiser that have a that have up have upward and firing speakers and a subwoofer and one of them that does huge built-in subwoofers are virtual Dolby Atmos surround soundbar systems that have Dolby Atmos upward and firing speakers. One of them is a 5.1.2. I mean, one of them is a 5.1.4, and one of them is a 7.7.1.2. I could have got the Sony. 7.1.1.2 Dolby Atmos Home Theater Surround Sound Bar System with upward firing speakers and a subwoofer. It's a virtual Dolby Atmos Surround Sound Bar, but I didn't get it. I got the one that does a 5.1, but I got the speak the surround speakers later. I got the the Sony 3.1 channel Dolby Atmos Sound Bar with no upward firing speak upward firing speakers with the subwoofer, and later got the surrounds. And I didn't like it since last year because it won't work in rooms with per, with flat ceilings. It will only work in ceilings that are high, ceilings that are vaulted, angled, slanted, or beam ceilings. And Nakamichi has made really high-end, high-performance, high-fidelity, high-quality Dolby Atmos home theater surround sound systems that have upward firing speakers and side firing speakers at the same Sides soundbar and Nakamichi has made now four, including two 9.2.2, including two 9.2.4 channel Dolby Atmos home theater surround soundbar systems with two subwoofers and four rear speakers. But the rear speakers you can position them as upward firing speakers, or or, or but the the it, it's a soundbar, but it's more than just a soundbar, it's a home theater. Surround sound bar system, home theater surround sound system with Dolby Atmos, and it and the side firing speakers not only bounce sound off the ceiling, it bounces sound off the walls, and you and it aim and it brings home the Dolby Atmos surround sound experience of a movie theater with into your home, and I I orig I originally wanted to use the seven point two point four channel Dolby Atmos home theater surround sound bar system with Nakamichi with two subwoofers. Or the 9.2.4 channel Dolby Atmos home theater surround soundbar system with two subwoofers and four rear speakers. But I've been saving a lot of money for a new Dolby Atmos home theater system, whether it's a soundbar. Well, because some there are t there are some times where I feel I think about going back to a receiver, but then after seeing the new James Bond movie at Universal CityWalk EMC with 4K laser projector. With good black, with very good black levels, very good sharpness, very good detail, very good clarity, very good, good graphics, and Dolby Atmos surround sound bar, and Dolby Atmos surround sound 3D object-based multi-dimensional sound. Michael from the synagogue, who is a per expert at home theater, movie theater audio, at movie theater audio, and televisions and home theater, said you already have a Dolby Atmos audio video receiver with 4K UHD. Don't buy a new Dolby Atmos home theater surround soundbar system. Buy speakers with Dolby Atmos. Buy speakers with Dolby Atmos. So I went in that direction, buying Dolby Atmos surround sound systems for my receiver. I have a six, I have a five year old now six year old Dolby Atmos receiver. So we went to the Video Audio Center. We got the 
Klipsch floor standing speakers with Dolby Atmos, but it didn't ship or come. So we got the newer ones and we got the bipole surround sound. So we got the bipole surround speakers, a center channel, and a, all with a high performance, high quality, high fidelity, high quality tweeter and woofer, and a massive 12 inch subwoofer, all from Klipsch. Man. But we haven't set up the surrounds yet. We've only set up the speakers, floor static speakers with Dolby Atmos, the center channel, and the subwoofer. And originally, I couldn't get the settings to work. And I recently bought a microphone. And before that, I recently got a microphone EQ calibrator for the receiver I have. I got it on eBay. I, I already own the Onkyo d speaker calibration microphone EQ thing I got from eBay. And I, it ships from another country, and I hope it works here in, in, the, in the United States because I live in the greater Los Angeles area, California, which is not, not only one of the largest urban metropolitan areas in the world and, the, and is one of the largest mega cities on the, the planet Earth and is populated to over 18 million people, but I just hope it works here. I'm so grateful and proud of living in one of the biggest cities in the United States, the greater Los Angeles area, which includes Los Angeles County, Ventura County, San Bernardino County, Orange County, and, and Riverside County. And there's five counties connecting to one in Southern California. I was born in, raised in, and grew up in Los Angeles. I still live in Los Angeles. And my ceiling in a family room where the LG OLED TV is, is flat. I watch Independence Day, the first film, countless times on a 4K HDR OLED TV with HDR and Dolby Vision. And the Sony Virtual Dolby Atmos surround soundbar system with no upward firing speakers. The picture looks great. It was great contrast, great black levels, very great dynamic range, great uniformity, great color accuracy, great dynamics, great sharpness, clarity, full detail, shadow detail. But this, it sounds good. It doesn't sound as the same as a Dolby Atmos home theater system with the receiver. But I finally, I, I'm almost done setting up the Klipsch Dolby Atmos home theater in a 5.1.2 setup. Right now it's a 3.1.2 setup, but the bad news is it says PCM and I got Dolby surround up mixing to work. But before that, I couldn't get the settings to work, but I finally got it to work. Maybe the receiver, well, the thing is we got the receiver, here's HDMI R connected to an HDMI cable to the to the. 4K HDR OLED Dolby Vision HDR Smart TV HDMI arc. It says PCM, but it can't be very misleading. And and you can and and I yesterday I watched a Marvel Cinematic Universe animated show What If just a couple of, just less than ten minutes, and it's a Dolby Atmos content. But the receiver can be misleading. Don't get me wrong. A lot of electronic home theater devices can sometimes be misleading for audio and video content, but, but I'm not sure, but we, this early this month, we, when this month is over, we may set up the surround speakers and calibrate the home theater Dolby Atmos surround sound bar, surround sound system, and it will sound much better, much cleaner, much cinematic, much more dynamic, much more based and trouble and dialogue heavy, and much greater much more three-dimensional than a than a Dolby Atmos soundbar surround subwoofer with no upward firing speakers on each. And my sister lives with her boyfriend in downtown LA. They have a, a new OLED 4K HDR Dolby Vision TV with Dolby Atmos in New York the, from 2021. And they, it's located in a beam ceiling that's not flat, but it has a lot of beams. And I gave Dara and her boyfriend, my twin sister Dara, who lives in downtown LA, that her OLED TV with 4K HDR and Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos is in a beam ceiling. I gave her my old non-cinematic, non-3D Dolby Atmos virtual surround soundbar system with no upward firing speakers to Dara. And and my twin sister and her boyfriend, well, early, most recently, I gave my Sony 5.1 channel virtual Dolby Atmos surround soundbar system with a subwoofer and rear speakers and no upward firing speakers to Dara to fit and work perfectly with her OLED 4K HDR, Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos TV with a, in, in a beam ceiling and a less than ideal ceiling, not flat ceiling. And Dara and her boyfriend loved it. It's like they've been sitting at a movie theater. 
despite that their ceiling is not flat but beamed. And I got a, and I own my Dolby Atmos receiver in a 5.1.2 setup in a 7.1 channel surround configuration for six years. I finally, but the good news is once Dolby Atmos or non Dolby Atmos content is working from the speakers and the receiver, but it, PCM can be misleading. The Dolby Atmos upward firing speakers sound really good and they still work very well. And I'm gonna set up the surrounds once, but but my dad can't help me set up the surrounds or calibrate the system yet. He has to have more time, but we'll do it some next week, maybe. And the bad news is I couldn't get Apple TV or to work, but that can be solved and fixed. Back to Independence Day. I've seen lots of blockbuster and popular movies on my TV and soundbar, but but watching movies, including Independence Day, that are have really good sound design on the 5.1.2 channel Dolby Atmos Home Theater with the receiver and the OLED 4K HDR TV will sound much, much better, much, much more cinematic, much, much more clear, dynamic, and great, much better than a soundbar with surrounds and subwoofer with no upper environment speakers. It will sound much close to a movie theater, and, it, and, I, and I have a lot of DTSX 4K Blu-rays, but my receiver doesn't do DTSX. It supports DTS HD Master Audio and Dolby Atmos, but DTSX is still backwards compatible with DTS HD Master Audio, and DTSX is probably a lot is probably the same as a DTS HD Master Audio. So once a movie plays on DTSX and the receiver that's playing doesn't do once you have a Dolby Atmos receiver that doesn't do DTSX but only DTS HD Master Audio and you put and you put a DTSX movie on a non DTSX surround receiver, it will sound much better, much, much better than much, much better. And it won't sound as the same as Dolby Atmos or DTSX, but it will still sound much lossless, high definition quality. And I love Independence Day. I haven't seen Independence Day on my new Dolby Atmos 5.1.2 channel Dolby Atmos Clips and Onkyo's home theater setup system, but it will sound much, much better. It was much, it was, and the picture and sound will sound much, much better closer to the filmmaker's intent and the sound designer's intent and sounds like going to the movies. And Independence Day, I love Independence Day. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Independence Day 2 is so bad. Don't watch Independence Day, people. Watch the first Independence Day. I gotta tell you, I have the ticket of Independence Day double feature at AMC Century City 15, and I actually have the 4K Blu-ray of Independence Day in HDR and DTSX, but it's still backwards compatible with DTS HD Master Audio. So if you haven't seen Independence Day, don't go see it, but warning, don't let your six and 10 year old or child younger than 11 watch Independence Day. If, if your kids are 11 to 13, they can watch Independence Day, but the best age to watch Independence Day would be 13 and up. But but sometimes it can be 11 and up, but I would recommend 13 and up. If you haven't seen Independence Day, go see it. Don't watch Independence Day Resurgence. It's so terrible, so bad, so that so terrible. Independence Day 2 is one of the worst sequels of all time, and I love the cast of Independence Day. Independence Day has great locations. It, it's got really great action scenes. I love the filmmaking duo of Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin. I've only seen two of Dean Devlin's produced movies. I've seen Geostorm. Written, I've seen Geostorm in theaters, written and produced and directed by Dean Devlin, the same writer and producer of Independence Day. I hate Geostorm. It was so terrible. But there are a lot of Dean Devlin produced movies and shows that are not horror, but are action, adventure, historical, war, documentary, um, fantasy, science fiction, fantasy, and other movies and shows I do want to see that are very popular and famous and good produced by Dean Devlin. And I love Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin. I'm not going to like all of their works, but I'm going to like a lot of them. And Independence Day is so awesome. If you, in Independence Day with Will Smith is such a fun movie. I wasn't even born in when Independence Day came out in theaters, but got to watch it as the beginning of an adult. Independence Day was so great. The visual effects were awesome. It gets to win the Oscar Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. The plot and the storyline of Independence Day is so great. I love the visuals, I love the characters, I love the aliens. The aliens in Independence Day 
are from outer space, not from planet Earth. Independence Day is so great. It's going to last a very long time. Independence Day is so unforgettable. It's a timeless classic worldwide cultural phenomenal blockbuster smash hit. Independence Day is so freaking awesome. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I love stories in science fiction where aliens threaten to take over the world and, and succeed in destroying lots of the world's big cities and survivors. A lot of survivors must fight back and stop the aliens from taking over the whole world. I love science fiction. I love outer space stuff. I love outer space movies and shows and books and games, but I haven't played the game yet, games yet. I don't like them in horror genres. But I love and love, love, love Independence Day. I love that movie. It's one of my favorites. I get, I can watch it every time over and over again. But Independence Day 2 is not good. I would never watch Independence Day Resurgence. But there's a time where I can watch Independence Day 2 one more time and not see it anymore. I hate Independence Day 2. It was a much anticipated but disappointing movie. Independence Day 2 was, again, written and produced by Dean Devlin. Written, produced, and directed by Roland Emmerich. I don't like Independence Day Resurgence. Resurgence. It was so bad. Will Smith was not in it. The characters were bad. The special effects, action, sound effects, musical score, and settings were so bad. And it's like a sequel to the Titanic. Independence Day is so great. It's got great action scenes, great adventure story, great science fiction. It's got great scenes of aliens threatening to take over the world. And humanity must stop the aliens. Independence Day had a very happy ending where the humans destroy the alien ships and the aliens died and humanity won the war. But still, most a lot of the major cities around the world are destroyed, but Earth is saved. I don't like those two Roland Emmerich disaster end of the world movies where people must survive in a global apocalyptic catastrophe event. But there were but 2012 and the day after tomorrow are huge blockbuster hits, but they weren't critically well received. But White House Down and Stargate, I like them. I love Stargate. White House Down was good, but not great. And White House Down got a 62% audience score of Rotten Tomatoes, which is popular and good with audiences, but not the greatest and most popular if it got a 90 or more percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes by audiences. I believe a 62% or more audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes is, is a good and popular audience rating, audience rating, but it's not the most good or most popular audience score. 100% or 90% audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes is the most popular and greatest audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. White House Down got mixed to positive reviews. Even I've read a lot of, I've read and watched a lot of good reviews of White House Down and it was good. It wasn't great. It was written, it was directed and produced by the same people of Independence Day and I love Independence Day. It's all, it's, it's one, Independence Day is one of those films that grabs my attention so much and it will influence me for the rest of my life. In my adult years, Independence Day is so great. I love War of the Worlds by Herbert George Wells. I th There's a sequel to War of the Worlds called The Massacre of Mankind. I want to read The Massacre of Mankind, which is a sequel to War of the Worlds. All comprehended and understand it as, as much as the one I read aimed at 6th and 7th graders. And War of the Worlds, I love it. It's one of my favorite books of all time. I want to see the original timeless classic 1950s movie War of the Worlds. It's nearly 90 minutes long, much shorter than the Steven Spielberg directed movie, which is nearly two hours. I gotta tell you, I love Independence Day. It's so great. It's so memorable. It's so timeless. It's a timeless movie. And it's so awesome. I love Independence Day, but Independence Day 2 Resurgence, it was so bad. It was totally disgusting. Totally garbage. Full of crap. No Will Smith. The, the plot is so bad. It wasn't as successful as the first film. It was so terrible, but Independence Day is so great. It's Independence Day was one of my favorite movies I loved when I was an adult at age 18 and over. Independence Day was one of my favorite movies that I became. Independence Day, the first film, is one of my favorite movies I loved as an adult at age 18, and I'll be 25 by the end of the year. Independence Day is so great. I hate Independence Day too. Once I see Independence Day, the first film on 4K Blu-ray and DTSX in Dolby Surround Unmixing with backwards compatible DTS Master Audio in a 5.1.2 channel Klipsch Dolby Atmos home theater surround system with an LG OLED 4K HDR TV. It will sound and look much, much better, much closer to the filmmakers and sound designers intent. But I wish my TV had Dolby Atmos on a firmware update along with a series of 4K HDR OLED Dolby Vision TVs from 2016, but it didn't happen. 
I wish oh, I want my TV to have Dolby Atmos and a firmware update and my receiver to have DTSX and HDR, but it never happened. It is what it is. I'm fine with what I have. Maybe when I get a job, I'll get a new 4K HDR OLED TV with Dolby Atmos in New York and a new Dolby Atmos audio video receiver with DTSX and HDR, but it's still good, very good, but not the greatest. It's good. Soon I'll set up the surrounds. I love Independence Day. There's a lot of people around the world who really like Independence Day, but not the sequel. Independence Day was so successful. It was so influential. Independence Day was great, influential. It was so fun and exciting. Independence Day, Independence Day was so fun. I love that movie, but Independence Day 2 was not as fun as the first film. It's not good as the first film. Thanks for watching. Bye.